Hello and welcome back to another Rust video. Today we're looking at linting in Rust using the Clippy package. If you don't know about Clippy, it's a crate that you can install on your machine and when you run it, it will give you suggestions to improve your code. And this includes things like best practices, shorthand syntax, and we'll see that it even catches some possible logical errors. So let's uh, have a look at that. Okay, as always, I've already executed Rustlings watch from inside the Rustlings repository. And here we can see that the compiler is complaining at exercises clippy clippy one.rs, where we can see that there seems to be an if condition where we check whether y does not equal x in line 14. And then we see that it says that the error is that there is a strict comparison of an F32 or F64 type. And that's probably what's going on here. X and Y are probably float values. And doing strict comparisons here is a bit of a problem. We'll talk a bit about that in a second, why that is. And then there's a cool little hint here where the compiler suggests that we might want to consider comparing them within some margin of error. And then there's some code here that we can make use of. And then also there's some notes here about something called epsilon. So what is going on here? Let's first open up that file and, and have a look. So I'm going to open up uh, exercises Clippy and then Clippy1.rs. Okay, and then here the file says the Clippy tool is a collection of lints to analyze your code so you can catch common mistakes and improve your Rust code. For these exercises, the code will fail to compile when there are Clippy warnings. Check Clippy suggestions from the output to solve the exercise. Okay, so we're basically dealing with a warning from Clippy because the code in itself, if we just quickly take a look here, so we see we have a float number X and a float number Y. They're both of type F64. That's what we can see here at the end of the actual value. We have the type encoded into it. And then we do a comparison here and then we print some output in case these two values are not equal. Now the code in itself doesn't actually have any compilation issues really. There's no syntax error as well, um, but still Clippy is giving us warnings about it. And in this case, what it catches is that it says, look, you're, you're dealing with two different F64 values here, which are float values, and you try to compare them in some way. And that's, that's kind of what it says here as well. There's a strict comparison of F32 or F64. So the problem with that is float values can be usually imprecise. So we can see here, for example, that we deal with a number 1.2331 and 1.2332. Now these two values are obviously not equal. However, when we perform strict comparison, because these values can be imprecise, our comparison check might actually not do what we think it does. So in this case, it might think that X and Y are actually equal because, well, you know, if you round these two values, 1.2331 and 1.2332, then these two values will actually be the same. And because of that, when we're dealing with F32 or F64 values and we want to perform comparisons, what we should do instead is not strictly compare these values, but compare the error rate or the difference between these two values. So in this particular case here, we will have a difference of 0 0.0001. And what we can then do is we can check, okay, if this error rate, if this, this error margin is big enough, then we know these two values are not equal. And also here, it's important to know that depending on how big the decimal point value is, the error margin may or may not be big enough to determine whether we are indeed deal with two different values. So how do we get around that? This is where the second hint comes into play. So here we can see that there are F32 epsilon and F64 epsilon available for error margin. And then there's a little link here as well where we can check out what this lint error is about. So let me open it up really quick. Okay, so here we have that link and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. It's a site where we can see all the different lints that Clippy comes with. And here we see that this is the lint error. And what it does, it checks for inequality comparisons on floating point values apart from zero, except in functions called EQ, which probably implement equality for a type involving floats. Why is this bad? Well, floating point calculations are usually imprecise. So asking if two values are exactly equal is asking for trouble. For good guide on what to do, see the floating point guide. And then we see here is an example. 
how we can deal with this. And it's kind of the same that we have in our exercise. So here you see we have these two numbers and then there's two cases where we do strict comparison here, which are considered bad. And then there is another way how it should be done where we can see the usage of epsilon. Now what's epsilon? Epsilon is what we refer to as the error margin. So remember what I said earlier, when we want to compare two floating point values, we want to know how big the difference or the error margin between these two values is. And that error margin, this is referred to as epsilon. Now, luckily Rust comes already with such a value in both types, F64 and F32, and we can just make use of that. And the compiler will then replace that with an error margin value that makes sense for the values that we're dealing with. And then another thing that we see here is that when we compare our values with the error margin, there's also this dot abs function that's called on these values. This is giving us the absolute value or the absolute number of the value we're dealing with. Now, what is an absolute number? An absolute number is the number representation of a value that describes how far that value is from zero. So for example, if I go back here into this file, I'm gonna put in a little scale here and I say we have minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, zero, one, two, three. Now here, if we had the value x equals minus three, then the absolute value of that would be three. Why? Because minus three is three values apart from zero. So same goes for something like minus six. There the absolute number is six and so on and so forth. So you also see that it kind of turns any negative value into positive value as well. Okay, and that's what we want to do here. So we want to basically say, let's take our X and Y. And then when we have that value, we want to turn that into an absolute number. Because in this particular case, even we can see that X is smaller than Y. So that will result in a negative value, but we want to have a non-negative value. And then we take that value and we check whether the value, which is our error margin now, is bigger than F64 epsilon and that is our new condition so we can take this thing here and we can put that in here and that should make that code compile so let's save it and see what the compiler is saying yep this is compiling and clippy is happy Awesome, okay, cool. So let's remove the comment and move on to the next one. Okay, so in Clippy2.rs, we see that there's an error in line nine where we seem to iterate over an option. Oh yeah, and the error says that for loop over option, which is an option. This is more readably written as an if let statement. And then there's a help note here that says, consider replacing for x an option with if let sum x equals option. Okay, cool. So let's open up that file real quick and see what this is about, right? So here we see a mutable value result with the value 42 and an option sum of 12. And then we say for every value x in option, we add x to our result and then we output that result. So something I didn't actually know is that we can iterate over options. Does make sense because an option is an enumerable, but anyway, it's not something I would do. And to make Clippy happy now as the common set what we actually want to do is we want to say if let sum x equals option then we want to do something here we want to take this and put it here I'm going to remove this here so again we're unwrapping the option check whether it is the variant sum of some value and only then we want to add that value to our result if option is none then we basically don't do anything and yeah that's pretty much it so let me save that and See what the compiler says. This looks good. Okay, cool. Removing the comment, moving on to the next one. Okay, and that was already it. A little video about Clippy and how it can help us write better Rust code. I think it's pretty cool that the language comes with a package like that, which also enforces not only best practices, but a unified way of how Rust developers write their code. So yeah, if you happen to work on something with Rust, make sure to make use of Clippy. It's gonna make your life better. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video.